In this video, I'm going to cover some of the frequently asked questions that I get from parents about the RCMS band program. The biggest question that I always get is how much should my child be practicing? And over the years, I've kind of developed a rule of thumb of a, a good range to shoot for is about an hour a week. Now, it's actually best not to do this all in one day. Like, just say, hey, on Saturday, I'm going to practice for an hour straight. It's actually better to break it up into smaller chunks. It could be 10 minutes a day, six days a week if you wanted it to. That would actually be really good because that keeps the lips um, firm and strong and it also keeps the mind engaged in what you're doing. You could do 20 minutes three times a week. Um, <clears throat> somewhere right around in there would be good. At the beginning of the school year, the kids are going to get a little green book. It kind of looks like this, it's just green and it's got the, the music that we're going to be playing for the year in it and in the front of it there is an assignment sheet every week the kids will get a new assignment it'll be a short one and they should have plenty of time at home to, to finish that if they're practicing an hour a week uh, shouldn't take near that long we're going to cover how to do those things in class they should come home practice on it and be ready to play that when they come back to their next lesson but they will have an assignment every week i do offer summer lessons and the summer lessons are not required. If you'd like to take them, um, just have your child ask me about it. And I have some forms you can fill out. The lessons are $12 once a week for 30 minutes, and I pretty well have um, from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock open the entire week throughout the summer, so we can work with, uh, around your schedule for that. I would like to say that uh, some of that money can be earned back by the students um, because I'm doing a program this year called Practice with a Purpose. And the way it works is if your child practices for an hour a week during these lessons, then $5 of that will be donated to the master's hands, and which is a food pantry here in town. And if they practice two hours a week, and just buy a signed paper from you, then $10 of that will go to the master's hands here in Albany. So um, that'd be eight lessons over the course of the summer. Your child could, learn, could earn $80 for the master's hand just from practicing this summer. So if you're in interested, let me know about that. Um, I always am asked where the instruments are put during the school day. Now, the flute players have little instruments and, and sometimes they'll keep theirs in their backpack or in their locker. Um, they don't have to though. In the band room, there are individual instrument locker slots for every person and the, those lockers will be assigned by number at the beginning of the year. So what the kids will do is when they come to school at the beginning of the day, they can go straight into the band room and put their instrument in that slot and it'll be down there whenever they come to band and at the end of the day they can come back down and pick it up and take it home with them. Now they can keep it there overnight, they don't have to take it home every day. Some of the kids will just take them home over the weekend, some kids take them home every day, it depends on the kid. There's no requirement on how much they have to take it home. Um, just know that they can do that. Also, if you'd like your child to get a little extra practice, because um, they're maybe not getting it at home, there's a wonderful opportunity before school. And I'll usually have about 20 to 30 kids that take part in this just uh, by their own free will. It's not required, but uh, the doors of the school open at 7.45 in the morning. And all the sixth graders just sit in the cafeteria at that time from 7.45 to 8. So if you'd like to have your kid here by 7.45 in the morning, they can go straight into the band room and they can practice. And they can actually pl play some of their um, assignments for me then, or they can ask questions about their assignment. If they're doing that five days a week, then uh, we're talking an hour and 15 minutes of practice time right there. And that, that would take care of the, the hour of practice that I was just talking about per week. The kids usually get into that because there's a lot of their friends in there. And sometimes they'll play songs together. And it's a good time to practice. Um, you can take the instruments home on the bus. That's no big deal. You're going to notice that whenever you get your schedule for the school, your band is not on the schedule until quarter two. And parents always call me asking why, why it's not on the schedule. Well, the answer for that is we don't meet as a full band until October, which is the second quarter. During the first quarter, we meet in what's called sectionals. And sectionals are small groups of anywhere from one to four people, uh, average size is two. And they are a pullout class, meaning I pull them out of PE once a week for this. PE is 80 minutes long, and I will pull them out of the first half or the second half. So they'll get, um, once they have time to change clothes and all that, they'll have 30 minutes worth of a lesson once a week. Um, <clears throat> so that's why it's not on the schedule for the first nine weeks. They'll still be seeing me, but it'll be pull out. I do have supplies here for sale. I would recommend going through me to get those. The band does not make any profit off of that. I sell it to you at price. What I do is I buy a bulk order over the summer of about $1,500 worth of items. 
and then parents can buy those off of me during the school year. It's a lot cheaper than going anywhere else. Um, clarinet reads are $1.50 from me. Um, saxophone reads are $2.00 and I also sell valve oil, slide oil. Uh, those are $1.25 which is really cheap. I sell cleaning cloths, cleaning brushes. So anytime that your kids want to buy something like that, they can come to me and I can give them something like that. Every kid has their own music account and it's a student account that travels with them from the middle school to the high school and they can either put money in there or they can sell fundraiser items through the course of the year which will also raise money for their student account. Now this account can be used for uh, the pizza party that we do at the end of 6th grade and 7th grade. At the end of 8th grade we go to Holiday World which is typically about $45 and then any money that's left over goes to the high school and pays for band camp and it can also go towards the Florida trip that they take once every four years. Whenever, um, whenever a kid has money in their account and they come to get an item from me I just deduct it out of the account. Some of the kids will go in the hole because they don't bring money for me and they need a read, the read's broken, so I'll go ahead and give them the read, but I keep track of how much their account is. Whenever it hits $10, I'll notify you and let you know because then I quit giving them stuff because I don't want them to go over $10 and you not know about it. Um, <clears throat> ways that you can help your child, um, especially over the summer, would be to drill the flashcards that I've given them, make sure they're really fluent in those, and then also know that they can be watching the videos that are on the website and get a little instruction on the upcoming assignments that they're going to have. Every kid has a list of all of the assignments that they need to go through and everybody's going to go at their own pace. Some people will go a little slower than others, some people go faster than others, but they can look ahead and see what's coming up and then watch the videos on the internet to get some lessons on that whenever they're outside of class. Also, this year, I'm really excited about this, every student's going to have personal access to a really nice program called Smart Music, and that'll be coming over the summer. Um, Smart Music is a program where they can have their music on screen, on a computer or a phone or an iPad, and they can hear what it sounds like, they can change the speed of it, they can play along with it and it will record them, it'll also tell them what notes they played wrong and which notes they played right, it'll tell them the wrong rhythms they had, you can click on a note and it'll show the fingerings for it. So it's a good way to see how something sounds and also a good way to record yourself. And kids will sometimes play their assignments for me at home and they'll record them and then they will send them to me. So that's one way to get ahead in class is using smart music. We do have an honor band at the school and particularly in 7th and 8th grade it meets at 7 a.m. and it plays some um, pretty advanced music. We start that in 6th grade and what I do is I just take the kids who are, who are practicing at home, catching on the fastest, doing their homework, getting their assignments done every week, and maybe even looking a little farther ahead. Those are the kids that I pull into the honor band program. So the time to get started on that would be right now over the summer or the beginning of the school year and trying to get a little bit ahead of schedule. As far as what we wear to concerts, we do buy a shirt that's $10 and there will be a permission uh, slip coming home for that. It's just a black shirt, it says Richmond County Music Department with some music notes across the front. We wear that to the concert, blue jeans and tennis shoes. I don't like to make kids spend a whole lot of money on dress clothes for that, so that's why we go that route. You can use the same shirt from year to year if it still fits, that's no problem. We do have some parties through the course of the year, and these are free to the students, but they're going to have to earn them by playing their assignments that I give them weekly. So uh, there will be a set number of assignments they have to get done for that nine weeks, and if they pass them, then they can go to the free party. And I'm looking into doing stuff like a, a pool party, skating party, um, a bowling party, a movie party, stuff like that. So that's incentive for the kids to start practicing. Um, another award that we have in band is as a kid uh, passes off several of their points, in fact, as they pass off every, uh, increments of 10 points, which are assignments, what I'll do is I'll put their name on a piece of paper and I'll put it in for a drawing for a gift card at the end of the nine weeks. So every nine weeks the kids that are practicing and getting their stuff done have a chance to win a gift card through that, which is another incentive I have to keep kids practicing. Fundraisers. In January we have a fundraiser where we sell um, stuff like pizzas and pretzels and stuff like that. Um, for every item that you sell the kid gets to keep $3 in their student account for themselves and the band gets $3 so that's one way to raise some money. We also sell candy bars through the course of the year. Uh, you can get a box of 64 of these 
and sell them for a dollar each. Whenever you're done with that, you get to keep all the money, which means that you get $32 just from selling that. They usually go in a day or two. Um, I had some kids last year that sold six boxes of them just in about a week or two. So that's another really great way to earn some money for some stuff like Holiday World and Disney World. And finally, the last question I get a lot is, how many performances do we do over the course of the year? Well, the answer to that is in sixth grade, we just do two. We do a Christmas concert in December, and we do an end of the year concert in May. And that's it. No other before or after school uh, responsibilities in sixth grade. In seventh and eighth grade, that goes up a bit. We have um, three to four concerts that we do at the end of uh, one at the end of each nine weeks, and we also have basketball games. Now, the people that are in the honor band are required to go to more basketball games than the people that aren't, because the people that are in the honor band are in both bands, and um, it ends up being about ten basketball games per year in seventh and eighth grade. Performances are part of the grade. They are one letter grade, which means that if you skip a performance with an unexcused absence, meaning that you go to school and then you don't come that night, I'm going to lower your letter grade uh, by one letter for that nine weeks. Now, um, if it's an excused absence, then I don't lower the letter grade. I just ignore it and you don't have to make it up. Uh, it, the way to get it to be an excused absence is to bring a, a note home from a parent and let me know what the reason was, and, it, and I'll decide from there if it was excusable or not. Funerals um, are a, a major one that people have. Maybe they got sick halfway through the day and had to go home, um, stuff like that. Uh, doctor's appointments, uh, and um, those are the kind of issues that I will, I will excuse. If you have a question, just give me a call at the school. You can always call the school and leave a message on my answering machine, and I check that every day. So I should get back with you in a day or two if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.